Hello to one and all present. My name is Lakshu Jolly. I am an intern at Lexis and Co. and I am a third year law student at New Law College, Pune. Today's topic is extradition law in India. As this video is going to be a little longer, this topic will be divided into two parts. This is part one of the video. Well, let's begin. There are some cases more often than you'd expect wherein an offender commits a crime that takes shelter in another country, which makes it all the more difficult for the original nation to bring itself to justice. This kind of scenario is very common in India and results in a lot of white-collar criminals to sneakily run away after committing a crime and reside in a nation where the extradition laws are not complying with India. This raises the question as to what is extradition and how is it important. Well, today's article will aim to answer any relevant questions regarding extradition. Extradition is defined as the process by which one state upon the request of another effects the return of a person for a trial for a crime which is punishable by the laws of requesting state and committed outside the state of refuge. Hence, for an extradition process to actually go through, there has to be a checklist of the following criteria. The two nations have mutually agreed to return surrender the offender. In cases like these, one nation has the offender in its custody while the other nation requests for the custody so as to try the offender for themselves and punish according to their law. It is done when a crime has been carried out against the requesting country and the criminal has taken refuge outside the jurisdiction of that country. Extradition is carried out in ac accordance with the extradition law of a country and are read with the extradition treaty and it, ha and it has with other countries. These treaties are bilateral in nature and they are signed by taking into account the divergent laws of two nations. They specify extraditable crimes and lay down detailed procedures and safeguard while defining the relationship between the act and the treaty. Extraditable persons include the following. Person who has been charged with the crime but not tried yet. Person who has been charged and tried and convicted but escaped custody. A person convicted in absentia. The Extradition Act 1962 defines the extradition procedure for extradition of uh, in India. The procedure is as follows. The extradition treaty lays down. The Act states that definition of an extradition treaty under Section 2D of the Act is a treaty agreement or arrangement made by India with foreign states relating to the extradition of fugitive criminals and include any treaty agreement relating to the extradition of fugitive criminals and includes any treaty agreement relating to extradition of fugitive criminals made before 15th of August 1947 which extends its to binding on India. Extradition offence under Section 2C of the Act states that if there is any signed extradition treaty with another state, then the offence provided for in the extradition treaty of the state will be used or if there is no signed extradition treaty with another state, then the term for imprisonment will be no less than one year under the law of India or the foreign state. This would also include composite offences. This makes a due that what composite offences are. Under Section 2A, a composite offence is described as to occur an act or conduct has occurred partially in India and partially in a foreign state, but when taken as a whole, the effect will constitute an extradition in India or the foreign state. Section 34 of the Act stipulates that an ex uh, extradition offence committed in a foreign state will be deemed to have been committed in India as well, thus making grounds for prosecution in India. In the absence of extradition treaty with a foreign country, the central government may consider an international convention to which India and the other country are both signatories and an extradition treaty for the crim crimes included in the convention. Although extradition is very vast, it does come with a set of limitations which do not allow it to penetrate all the way. The limitations are as follows. Extradition, extradition request is not honoured by India if the extradition request is made by the state but does not share a common international convention with India. An extradition request is made by the state which shares common international convention but the request made is not set out in the international convention. According to section 31, an offender of the extradition act is not uh, surrendered to a foreign state under the following circumstances. The offence for which a foreign state has requested extradition is of a political nature. According to the statutes of the uh, requesting foreign state, the crime of the extradition state is sought and is termed is time barred. In India, the criminal has been charged with crime unrelated to the initial uh, extradition offence. In India, the uh, perpetrator is already serving a prison sentence. Well, to continue with the following part of this video, please stay tuned. The part 2 will be in the next video.